Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, appreciate everyone here tonight. And uh, Amen. thank God for His goodness to us. I don't want to take anything for granted. And uh, every heartbeat, every breath, I give Him praise uh, for what He's done, how He keeps us and helps us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Becky asked me to speak tonight, so we're just asking the Lord to help us. And, uh, and uh, so let's just ask God to help us tonight. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this service. Yes. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is here in a powerful way yes. to touch our lives, to lead us, to guide us, to help us. And I pray, Lord, right now. That you'd take control of these next few moments. Yes, you'd hide me behind the cross. And God, that your word would go forth. And God, that find good ground in our lives that we might bring forth much fruit. Lord, let us leave this service with the victory, with hope, with thanksgiving. And Lord, we give you all the praise. And Lord, we say a special prayer. For Sister Amy tonight, yes, Lord, that asks yes. that we would say a special prayer for her as she's dealing with these seizures in her arm. And we yes, pray Lord. that healing would come to her. And Lord, that you would touch her in the yes, name of Lord. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. She, uh, Brother Amy called me just before the service and asked us to remember her she's been having trouble with that arm and uh she'd had trouble the last week we met together and they thought maybe it was diverticulitis but they found out she had had food poisoning so she's been through a lot and and now this with her arm so they're really asking uh, for our prayers so remember her in prayer praise god Scripture tonight in John chapter 4, John chapter 4, verse 31. There's a lot going on in this chapter, but um, I landed on this. I felt like uh, this was where I was supposed to go tonight with this message. In verse 31 of chapter 4 of John. Praise the Lord. It says, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him, that sent me, and to finish His work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for His Word. And we just ask the Lord to, to move right now in this service. Praise God. Hallelujah. This Scripture tonight, well, I don't know if Jesus, uh, what they brought Jesus, but I know what I had this afternoon. And we went out to eat after church. And uh, we were getting there ready to order. And here I look down and there's a maggot on my table by my plate. Squirming all around. And uh, I couldn't believe it. I've never, you know, uh, we've been to some dirty truck stops, but I never ate with a maggot. <laughs> but there we were this afternoon. And... Uh, but uh, whatever they brought Jesus, it had no uh, attraction to Him compared to what He was doing. The will of God. Hallelujah. Yes. As Christians, a lot of times, we spend our whole lives fighting the will of God. Why is that? You know, you think of sinners that come into the house of God. And they'll sit in the pew and, and you know some even this morning because we had communion when it was time for communion no. they filed right out. I think there was 10 or 11 of them just walked right out that door because 
They knew they're not right with God. That's a scary place to be Amen. if you know the Scriptures because we know according to the Scripture, Jesus can come at any moment. That's right. He could have came this afternoon during an afternoon nap or maybe you were out doing something and Jesus could just come. It could be time. So we need to always be ready and prepared for the coming of the Lord. Now, for Christians, the will of God we can put off. Things we know we need to be doing. A lot of times, um, we can get apathy in our lives and get lazy as Christians and we don't do the things we know we should be doing. But Jesus had a thirst Hallelujah. He had a hunger. And though His body and His own fleshly belly was hungry, when they came with that food, that to, telling and encouraging Jesus to eat, there was only one thing on His mind, and that was His mission. Hallelujah. That He had come to the earth to fulfill what God's plan was. And I say, Lord, help me. Let me lay my life down on the line and say the world does not matter. The things of this world and what we fight for and what we strive for and the things we think that count are all just dust in the wind. It's just gone in a moment's time. But if I fix myself on the desires of God, hallelujah, on the desires of His Word, how He wants me to be as a disciple of Jesus Christ, to follow Him, hallelujah, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a reward waiting. I, you know was talking to my dad. He's 84 years old. And I appreciate everyone praying for him. And he's just sharing with me. He said, I need to downsize some things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he can't ride a motorcycle anymore. And he's telling me some things. And I thought, well, uh, I thought, this is kind of depressing. You know? I mean, you start talking about things you can't do anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I was talking to Dad. I said, well, I hope you won't get upset, you know, talking about these things. And uh, he said, no, no, not at all. And you know what? That's how it should be. Right. Because hopefully we've laid up for treasures in heaven. Right. Hopefully we've lived a life that... When these things are lost, I mean, there's some people that work hard for what they have here. That's right. But just like I said, a heartbeat, a, you're a heartbeat away from eternity. That's right. You're a breath away from eternity. So what do I have? How's my bank account looking in heaven? It might not be as great down here. Maybe I've not accomplished the things. I, did you hear about the poor man? He, from World War II. I think he's 112. 112 years old and someone stole his identity and, and took his money out of his account. Mm. And so, thank God, you know, they have those um, go fund me. Yeah, go fund me or something where they'll try to raise money to help someone and Man, the last time this morning, that was $400,000 they raised for this guy to help me. So, you know, he might go out a rich man. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but it's amazing how quickly things can pass. Amen. I mean, if, if you're, you got everything invested in the stock market, that thing can fall. You know, we saw people heard of the suicides and we heard uh, in the Great Depression how people took their life. Why? Because money was their everything. That's right. Their house was their everything. Material things became their everything. But oh, we've got a better hope tonight. Hallelujah. And I want to make sure for me and my house that I'm serving the Lord and I'm going to start pressing forward and doing the things for God that He's called me to do so I know that bank account in heaven is full. Yes. Hallelujah. 
There was no doubt with Jesus. There was no piece of bread going to lead him astray from his thoughts. There was nothing fleshly that was going to, even when he was tempted in the desert and Satan came to him, there was no temptation that was going to keep him from his desire and that was to fulfill God's will. Think, I mean, think of it. When you think of your flesh, you ever ask yourself, could I be a martyr? When we hear of different things through the years that people have suffered for Christ, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not great for pain. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not one to, oh yeah, give me some. No. Give me an aspirin. <laughs> Make this thing go away, you know. That's how I am. Amen. But I pray to God I can stand for Jesus. I pray to God that, hallelujah, I would lay it all on the line for Him. That, hallelujah, I would just give it all to Jesus. Hallelujah. And let Him be the Lord of my life in that time. Would I... Look for an exit? Would I look for comfort? And uh, Jesus on the cross, you know, He's on the cross. He's suffering. They're making Him suffer. And His flesh is being torn apart. Nails in His hands and nails in His feet. And uh, He's dying slowly. And he could have called 10,000 angels. There was never a prayer request. I mean, that could have been answered as quickly as what Jesus could have said. It says he could have called on the angels of God. And they would have relieved him. Think of that. But he did it for you. Hallelujah! He did it for you tonight! That you can receive healing in your body. That you can be forgiven of your sins. That you can walk in victory. That you can leave the past and in in behind. Hallelujah. And you can walk forward in victory with God. Yeah. And out of condemnation and darkness. Oh, hallelujah. What a victory. So what are we seeking for today? When we think of our lives, what are we putting all our efforts into and, and thinking about? What consumes our minds? Is it heaven? Tony just gave you know, that wonderful testimony. If it wasn't for God, thank God Travis, he knows God helped him. That's right. You know? Or it could have been something bad. How many times has God brought us out of these things. Yes. And uh, He's helped us. Hallelujah. Well, I want to do something for God. I want to have a heart after God. That's right. I, I want to be careful how I share this because I don't want to take any glory. But what God laid on my heart, I don't know how many got a good look at Linford when he preached. Here and um, when he spoke behind his pulpit, his coat didn't fit a bit. Just, it, I mean, he, he's a big guy. He wears a 15 shoe. <laughs> I couldn't get over it. And uh, and uh, but he was standing here, and I looked at the back of his coat on the shoulders and. On the elbows, and it was stained, it was dirty, it was coat. And we don't even realize what those two boys come out of. You know, he was saying how he had 34, 34 brothers and sisters, he was the 35th. 85% of the people in Jamaica are born out of wedlock. 85%. And to see God get a hold of those two boys right. and be serving God, 
giving their lives to ministry, wanting to come and, and to give to America, you know, to give back, to help with churches and painting and doing work. I, you know, I was so excited because I sat there and as soon as I looked at him, God told me, said, I want you to buy him a new coat. I've never felt God's presence come over me like that. And I took those two boys, we took them up to Altoona, and I said, we're going to buy them new coats and new dress shoes. And they were like they were in Christmas land. I mean, they were just, they were so happy. And, and when they were telling the difference of the money, and what $50 to us is 5000 to them. 50 of our dollars. And, uh, and how poor they are. And, uh, and just to see the appreciation and the happiness. And I said, God, this is a wonderful feeling to do the will of God because I knew God was pleased. God was pleased with what I did. Yeah, and I don't say that to, to uplift us or anything. Yeah, right. You know, I don't have... Believe me, that was extra. That's not something that's just laying in a big pot. And, oh, I'll get a little out of the pot and give it to them. No. You know? And, uh, and it was just the feeling that God was so... And I want to tell you this part of it. Because... When we did that, these since we've done that, I've never seen such an inflow of people saying, hey, I want you to come to my church. I want you to, you know, someone handed me money right out of the blue. And I knew God was saying, every time it would happen, I'd run into someone, someone want to bless our ministry or something, I would say, that's, that's what it was. God was pleased with that. You're never going to be let down when you give to God. You're never going to be let down when you become a living person. You'll never be let down. No, I was excited, you know, just when Becky announced Bible school. There's been several already come up. Some handed her money. Some said other things they want to do for Bible school. I said, praise the Lord. And that's what that's how it should be. You know, when you take care of the house of God, God's gonna take care of your house. He's gonna bless you. Hallelujah. He's gonna pour out his spirit upon you. Hallelujah. He's gonna bless you. One one thing that happened, Becky and I ran out to to the uh, I don't know how many have heard of the Ark Encounter. Ark Encounter. But they built the ark to the original specs exactly how Noah would have built it. And it's sitting out there in Kentucky. And we went to it. And you just have to see that. That is just amazing how huge the ark was. And they, you went through and you saw the different levels of that ark. And... And, you know, a lot of things are theory, but they had theories of how they may have gotten rid of the waste and different things and and uh, different way they handled things on that boat. And, you know, God is, is amazing. Amen. And and just, just to think of Noah, how uh, he carried out the will of God. Now I'm telling you, there's got to be somewhere along the way he was getting discouraged <laughs> building that big thing. And, you know, they say they built it with wood and everything. It's wood. And they said it's the largest wooden structure in the world now. It is that ark that's built out in Kentucky. And, uh, but just to think, you know, just like this, it was in Noah a drive to do the will of God. He wanted to please God. He knew there's a work to be done. And there's a work to be done with, with those you are around and, 
and your loved ones. There's a work to be done to tell them about the love of Jesus. There's a work to be done to, to send out uh, from this church and uh, to reach out to those that are lost. There's a work to be done to draw them in. That's I think of Bedford Valley when Dad first started the ministry. That uh, they... Uh, Sold the old church. You see the beautiful new church. Well, it's not new now. But on 220, is always a beautiful church. And uh, the old church was on down the road, and it's a house now. But uh, when they sold that church, and my dad was starting out in this ministry, they gave him all the money of the sale of that church <laughs> to start the ministry. That was a miracle. That was a miracle. And to see what God's done today. And you know, you sow, you're going to reap. Hallelujah. There's going to be an answer come. And I thought of the giving there, and I didn't tell the whole story, but when we went out there, my, my first cousin, he's pastor of a, a big church in Baltimore. And who do we run right into? <laughs> right? Come run right into my first cousin right there. And uh, at the ark, and he said, "Hey, we gotta have you come and preach." And uh, they give good offerings there, and it's a blessing to our ministry. Hallelujah! And uh, keeps our trucks on the road. And, I, and once again, I said, "This is this is America. How can this happen?" Of all the people to run right into, and I said, "You know, God has us on a schedule. God has a plan." Yes, and uh, He doesn't let us down. Yes. And He shows us the way and He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. He yes. gives us uh, what we need. Hallelujah. When you step out for God, when you say and commit to Him, I'm going to give Him my life. I'm going to serve Jesus with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. When you make that commitment to Him, and you step out in faith, maybe where you're not even comfortable, that's where God comes in every time. And He shows you the way. You, I'll never forget Tom Lance getting ready to go to Jamaica. And there weren't many, weren't many missionaries willing to go. And, uh, but he was one that decided to go and give his life to the mission of Jamaica. And he went, and I remember him trying to get teams together to go down. They'd work on churches. They'd work on rooms. They'd paint. They'd do all that stuff. And that was selling. That was selling into that country from our country. Well, now Tom's getting up there. <laughs> and things are winding down in his life. He still goes over once a year and takes a group over. But really, he's retired. But now these Jamaicans, they said, we have not sent missionaries from our country. We always accepted missionaries. We never sent them out. He said, now we're going to send missionaries out. And so it started with Tom. And they brought the first group. We were the first group. They worked on our church, painted our church for the first trip. And now this year, they had a whole nother team going to Tennessee <laughs> while they were here at our church or our area. Yes. And, uh, and I'm telling you, they're preachers. They're preachers. I mean, they, 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 they preach the Word and they pray hard. And I think, I told them that at the camp. Tom, you know, one day they'll say, a missionary came to our church, to our country. A missionary gave his life to come to our country. And now I, I said, I believed it. I, I felt it. They want to read, they want to get into America. They want to preach. And I said, I believe they're going to go all over this country. And they'll say, Tom Lance came. <laughs> I believe that. And that sowing, that sowing, there's a reaping. Amen. And now America hopefully will reap from what was given when they were weak, when they didn't have anything. 
to come to bless us. We bless them. And now look what God's doing. It's so powerful. Hallelujah. You can't outgive God. You can't get a vision big enough that's bigger than God. I want to tell you something. God is wonderful. And He says, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. What's your vision? I'll say something for our church. I think we need a church man. <laughs> we won't have an official board meeting. But, uh, you know, I think we need to get a man again. I think we need to pick up children for Bible school and reach out, you know. And... Uh, and have something that we can transport those that need a ride, whatever it would be, but those are things to think about. There's always something. I remember one time when Bernard was preaching, the sign had kind of gone down and it was a mess and we were all sitting here and, and uh, I, I brought up about the sign. I said, I wonder if anyone thinks we're closed because that sign had gone down, you know? And uh, man, he's, he got one that funny. I had scared him out to death. Like someone <laughs> thought this church was closed. And, uh, and I'll never forget. I mean, Earl stood up. I'd give $100 that sign. Others stood up with their money. And, and, uh, and you know, we got that sign we got out there today because of that. And it was paid for, you know, I believe cash. I don't think we people Thank gave to that sign. And, that's how you get things done. God Amen. lays things on your heart. Yes. And uh, when you get to the things of God, when you get to your church, Amen. it is all seen. Boy, I want to tell you, I thank God for a treasure, but God, God's a good treasure. Hallelujah. Yes. It's all counted in heaven. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's take this Word and and go with it yes. and, uh, and follow Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength to do the will of who has sent us. Hallelujah. Yes. He's putting a calling on people. Yes. You know, it used to be in churches, church services, people would get called to be missionaries, to be preachers, to be evangelists. Amen. They'd get called right out of the church. And uh, when yeah. Bernard got called, I don't know how many others were called right along with him. And they all, you know, ended up in the ministry. And so, um, you know, we need to listen to the voice of the Lord. I, I got to say this, my neighbor, he, he's in the nursing home. His name and uh, I ask you to pray for him. But I'll never forget he... We have a piece of land between us, a little wooded area, and an old foundation there. And he was so wanting that. Everything within him was wanting that piece. And he's not a Christian. He was wanting that land so bad. And he would go to the guy that had it, and he was doing chores for him. I mean, helping him do stuff. He he was wanting to get on this guy's good side, and then. I heard about it. And, uh, you know, he finally got that land and, and then things began to happen to his body and he couldn't do a thing with it. And, you know, he, he worked so hard to get what he thought he needed, you know, and, and could have. And, uh, and then couldn't do anything with it. And now is in a nursing home in Rockville when the house sits empty. And nothing's done to that land. He got it. The thing is, what's he have for eternity? What's laid up on the other side? There's things we can work for real hard here, but they're just going to be left to someone else. But oh, help me. Help me be faithful to the things of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's stand tonight. These altars are open.